Hey, happy Wednesday. How are you? Hi, everybody. How's it going? We're on two different platforms right now. We are on Facebook and we're on YouTube. I don't know where you are, but we'll see here in a minute when you start commenting. Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you're here today. I am with my very good friend, Rachel Plyler. And one thing that they don't know about you, Rachel, is that you are with us <laughs> a lot of Wednesdays. It's a true. lot of filming because she's true. usually on the other side of the camera making sure that Jenny knows what she's doing, <laughs> which means Rachel, you're going to be there, right? So um, she's the one setting up cameras and lights and making sure we're connected and things work well. So um, she is a vital, critical person here at Detalistai in so many ways. But today I was like, step around the other side of the camera and do Word on Wednesday with me because she has um, such a <clears throat> dynamic um, love for God's people. She has a real gift of justice and um, just a just a strong testimony. Your testimony is awesome. We definitely need to get that one of these days for sure. In fact, have you done a podcast with me yet? Uh, Whoa. No. Okay, that's what's next. <laughs> um, her testimony is just in, just absolutely incredible. What God has done in her life, and it'll it'll impact you so greatly. Um, so today, Word on Wednesday, what we're doing, of course, is we're prophesying, and we love to do that. We love to just to speak into into your life. And here's how it works: just in case you are brand new to Word on Wednesday, we've been doing this for well over a year now, and every single Wednesday, we're here at noon Pacific time. Um, give a give or take a few minutes. All right. <laughs> sometimes requires a little bit of patience, um, but we are here right about noon. And what we do is we like to allow God to speak to you prophetically and, you know, bring things to the table that is going to give you encouragement, give you hope and really um, see how amazing God is, how he'll step into your life, into your heart, into your mind. And he'll begin speaking things that you're like, wait a minute, how did they know that? Well, mm -hmm. we didn't know that. Right. We didn't know, right. but mm -hmm. the Lord wants you to know some things. And so the gift of prophecy is one of the many different gifts that God brings his people. Okay. Um, and, and there's lots of different gifts that I wouldn't even go into because it would take up the whole time to teach on it. But the gifts of the Holy Spirit are powerful and they are used for one purpose. And that is to bring us closer to God, our relationship closer to him. And that allows us then to be equipped to do the things that he's asking us to do on the earth, to move his vision forward. And um, without the gifts, I I don't know how this whole thing would go. It wouldn't go very well because <laughs> we'd have to rely on our own strength and our own skill set, which is pretty, um, pretty low in comparison to what the Holy Spirit brings us. So the gift of prophecy is simply the ability to hear, see, sense, like it's an impression. Sometimes it's a picture. Sometimes it's a knowing. Sometimes it's just straight facts. Like I'll get a birth date or something and mm -hmm. it's a makes a point of contact for somebody. And what will happen is then your spirit will leap on the inside and you'll go, whoa, that is totally for me. And you should feel the Holy Spirit in that moment really making contact with you and saying, hey, I'm right here. This is what I want to share with you. And the um, point of prophecy, the reason for prophecy is for you to make a deep love connection with God and to give you some direction. Sometimes it has direction to it. Sometimes it's just encouragement, mm -hmm. but it is always, always something to help you move forward and to really um, ignite your purpose in Jesus. So I love it so much. Now, if we say your name, because we're watching the feed and we say, hey, you know, so-and-so's on here. This is awesome. We want to, you know, share a word with you. And then we say somebody else's name, but your spirit kind of reaches up and grabs the word for the other person, then you don't need to do, you just need to take it. You need to take it. Cause it's not like the, the spirit of prophecy isn't like a portion size. It's not like, okay, one for you, one for you. It's more like, um, God oftentimes will use a person as a point of contact. And that right there becomes like, Oh, okay, this mm -hmm. is the word. And so when your spirit grabs it, don't like go, oh, I don't want to be greedy. I want to give that back. You just got to take it and run with it. Okay. That's how it works. And then the last thing I'll say, and I use this analogy every single time. So just bear with me if you've heard me say this lots. Um, but when we get a prophetic word, it's like we've found a little tiny puzzle piece on the ground and you have your life 
puzzle pieces on the table, like a billion pieces, right? Like all these puzzle pieces. And some of it's put together, some of it's like, you know, kind of laid out. Maybe some of it's totally disorganized. Maybe some of it is like, okay, all the orange pieces go here. You know, it, wouldn't that, I, I think that's like my life. Like there's mm -hmm. some places I'm like, okay, that all makes sense to me. And over here, I'm like, okay, I have no idea where those things go. I, I don't even know what to do with those things. But prophecy is like one of us or somebody else um, that's hearing from God will pick up a puzzle piece and go, well, this is what I just found. Does this mean anything to you? Now to us, it's just a little puzzle piece with some random shapes and colors right. on it. And it's not like super profound to us all the time. In fact, most of the time it's not. So it's kind of an unemotional experience for us, right. but we just hand it to you and go, does this mean anything? And you, when you see it, you're going to know, right? That's why your spirit leaps. Cause you're like, oh yes, that's totally, I don't know exactly where this goes. I've been looking for this. And you pop it right in that spot where you've been looking for that piece or, or you have no idea where it goes, but it has patterns and colors that, you know, fit the big picture. And you're like, oh man, I'm going to need that later. And so you set the word aside because there will be a moment in time where you're like, oh, that's the piece that they handed me. Right. So I've gotten prophetic words before Rachel, where I'm like, okay, this is cool. Yep. I, it bears witness with me. I don't know what to do with it right now. Right. <laughs> but I just set it on the table and let it be there. And then there comes a day where I'm like, where's that word? You know? <laughs> and I'm so glad I recorded it uh -huh. or I wrote it down because I need that yep. because I need reminded because there's probably something that God's either asked me to do or pushing me into, or actually inviting me into doesn't yes. really push. It's a strong <laughs> invitation. Um, and I'll be there and then I'll be like, okay, wait. And then doubt wants to set in mm -hmm. or insecurity or whatever. And then I'll look at that word and it's like, Hey, this is what God's going to do. This is what's going to arrange for you. And all of a sudden that word means a whole lot more mm -hmm. than it did when the person gave it to me. Okay. So just know that, Hey, if it fits somewhere now or later, just take it, write it down and make it your own. Um, okay. So before we get started, we see people here on YouTube and we have people of course coming in through Facebook. Um, that's interesting. We have almost the exact number on Facebook as we do that. as we do on YouTube. So I would actually like to know from you. Um, I'm just going to do a quick random vote here. If you are, if you just know that you're always going to pop on Facebook and you prefer Facebook, would you write Facebook in there? I'm just curious. I'm just, I'm just completely curious what you're thinking. Um, kind of as a long term answer, like oh, long term, I just prefer Facebook. Um, if you would, if you like things on YouTube. And we'll try to do both platforms for as long as we can, mm -hmm. as we are able. But if you like YouTube and you prefer that, like if you had to pick one over the other, I want you to just put, you know, YouTube in there if that would be your choice. Just kind of a little quick poll. Um, okay. And then before we get going here, I just want to ask you if you will put in the comments, did you attend a prayer square party last night? Maybe you hosted one. Maybe you came to one. Maybe you got online with us and you were partying with you and the Holy Ghost. <laughs> um, I want to know, were you there? It was so cool. I made, um, let me pick it up here. I made this one, you know, for the demonstration for the workshop video. So this looks familiar to you guys if you were there. And then I made this one last night during the party. So it was funny because I was like, okay, I made this one um, maybe 10 days ago when we filmed mm -hmm. all that. And then I was like, you know what? A lot has changed in 10 days. <laughs> My true. million esters went to 10 million I, because that's true. <laughs> I got a prophetic word from Pastor Callie at Crown Conference. And so I was like, well, I might as well make another one because things are evolving and changing. And it doesn't mean that I'm not going to pop in here and put these guys side mm -hmm. to side. But I want you to know that your prayer square is um, it's it's really about the power of prayer. It's not about a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Right. But the thing I wanted you to know is this is seasonal. I was making this last night going, I'll probably need to make another one in two weeks, you know, in 20 days. Right. Because because things start happening so quickly mm -hmm. when you're praying for them. It's like things get pushed through. Things get pushed through rather than stalled out. So don't be afraid to scribble something. And then maybe four days later, you're literally like, I need a new prayer square. Right. You know, and you can take your journal, draw a square mm -hmm. and go XX. Or you can, um, a friend of mine, Bethany Johnson, she sent me pictures of what she did with her kids. And she got them a prayer journal and she just did a cross. And then each yeah. quadrant was her kids putting something in that they were praying for. You guys, it, it, it really is more about the concept of covering and governing our life and covering these really four important areas. It's not about literally how you did it. Okay. Well, and praise yes. God if it's changing, because that means your prayers are getting answered. Yes, and that's God's right. moving. So we don't want it. We don't, I don't want this for life. I want no. to see this happen yes. on the earth. So 
Yes, I love that. Thank you, Rachel, for pointing that out. Um, and then they also become kind of a record mm -hmm. of what we are praying for. Yeah. I love looking back at my first prayer square and going, man, I remember when that was like something that I was contending for mm -hmm. and it wasn't here and now it's here. Yep. That's so awesome. Okay. So this also becomes a document. And so um, keep hold of these, you know, put them in a book, put them in a binder, whatever you got to do. And um, do not forget about your kids. We had our kids here last night. And I was like, okay, girls, we actually have to go to bed. Like they were looking at scripture. They would, they were so excited about uh -huh. finding scripture. And I'm thinking, okay, God, you're really amazing because you found a way for kids to get into the word mm -hmm. instead of just read your Bible. Right. There was like a, there was an aim. Yep. And so they wrote down their needs and, um, Esther put down Trump, you know, I want Trump in office, <laughs> you know, she's, she's 12. And she goes, mom, I'm going to have to find a scripture for Trump. And I was like, well, there's not an actual scripture for Trump himself. <laughs> and then she comes back and she goes, mom, I found, I found Trump and Trump in the Bible. And I was like, ah, stand corrected. I mean, <laughs> and, and there was a, a word, um, Trumpful, which I, I, I'm going to have to look it up anyway, Trumpful. <laughs> and it was a Trumpful procession of victory. Oh. And it was a really cool thing. So she was like, no, I'm finding a scripture. And they were so adamant about it there. It was amazing. And then their quadrants we had, I said, Esther, Really, if you want to do 20 minutes, that's amazing. But can I suggest that you do two minutes each side? Because mm -hmm. I wanted to give her something that she could do long term. Right. Not like I did it for two days and right. then burn out type of thing. I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't burn out. Maybe they'll pray for an hour. You know, who knows? But we just did two, four, six, eight, eight minutes. And I'm thinking, man, teaching kids to pray, teaching them to mm -hmm. look up the word of God, and then teaching them to use the word of God. I'm like, right. this is blowing my mind. It's blowing my mind. And so some of you, I just feel prophetically today that you've been, you've been feeling a call from God to really bring your grandkids or your children or your youth group mm -hmm. or your kids group in church. And you're like, what can we do to begin to solidify some of these things that they need to be taught right. that they're not getting taught? And I think the prayer square is kind of like a curriculum. It's actually really neat. And we're going to yeah. do it at Youth Revival. Yep. Um, we have a very, very small, 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 small. So I can't promote it to all of you. I'm sorry. But we're doing a little Youth Revival um, to make sure that we're in all the, you know, X's and O's of Oregon. But um, small little group of kids. And we're going to have them do mm -hmm. um, do the prayer square. So anyway, yeah. it's going to be awesome. Be I want you to also talk about, you know, when we talk about the million esters, the 10 million esters, um, would you share your heart for uh, Gen Z, which I don't know that the, <laughs> do you know the age? I don't know where it cuts or, off, but okay. Gen Z are basically our teenagers okay. in the early twenties right now. Okay. And then millennials, 20, probably anyone 25 to early thirties. Okay. So I want Rachel to share um, her heart. She's been right in here with us. In fact, Rachel was the one that said, we need to do prayer square parties. I mean, she's on the creative side of Tetelestai Ministries and just doing all sorts of things. And so I want you to share your heart. Um, when, we, when we go across and we look at the text messaging system where people have joined mm -hmm. the movement, our average age, which I'm so thankful for this because we have the, the, we have the, matriarchs of <laughs> yeah. the kingdom with us, 60s and 70s. There are lots and lots of 60s yep. and 70s. And I want you 60s and 70s to continue to invite your friends because you know what? We cannot do this without you. We cannot do this without the praying warriors. We cannot do this without the mothers and grandmothers who have built a solid foundation and we need your prayers and we need your leadership. And then when we look at the age um, it's really dropping low in the thirties and super low in the twenties. Like I'm mm -hmm. talking like I can out of, I don't know. I think we have 1400 people or so on this list and we can almost count them just boom, 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 mm -hmm. boom, boom. Yeah. How many 20 somethings are in that group and very short on the thirties. And so anyway, would you talk about that yeah. just briefly and then we'll start prophesying. Yeah. I'll actually prophesy to that group okay. is what I felt like I was supposed to do. Um, I'm 29 um, but I've been a part of this for a long time. And I think early on, God really brought me to a point of being at the end of myself. <laughs> um, that yeah. really happened about 2017. So early in 2017, so almost four years ago, um, I just got to my rock bottom and I'm grateful it happened so early in my life because yeah. I hear stories of people in their forties and fifties and sixties who are just coming to the end of themselves and laying it down for God and surrendering and wishing that they had those years back to surrender to God. And I think millennials, I mean, I'm one, so I get it. And I, I, I lived my own way for a long time. 
um, long enough to have a, a big old story. Um, and it's just not, it's just not worth it. Um, and I will just tell you that the last four years have been, you know, serving, serving God and going, God, I don't care where you want me. I don't care where it takes me. I don't care what it costs me. It could cost me friends. It could cost me my family. It could cost yeah. me um, jobs. It could cost money. I don't, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm laying it down and just seeing what God will do with a surrendered heart That's right. is worth all, losing any of that. And Amen. the truth is though, and, and here's, here's the deal. We think that we're going to lose all those things. God actually gave me more friends than I could have asked for deeper relationships than I prayed for um, has given me an abundance of Amen. finances and you, Jesus. Um, of relationship and joy and freedom that makes it worth it yeah. <laughs> to have surrendered early on um, in my twenties and say, you know what, God, I, I, I don't need all that. Um, and so I just, what I heard from millennials today was it's time to wake up. Amen. It is time to wake up. Yeah, we need you. We need you in this movement. You have, we have, we have a voice and a, pers a perspective that, um, that an older generation doesn't have. We understand Facebook. We understand YouTube. We understand the power of technology, of social media, of, and we have an influence that um, needs, needs to be used and a voice that needs to be heard. So if you're sitting here thinking, I'm only 23 and you know, what, what do I know? Okay. Get yourself a little prayer square, Yeah. <laughs> get in the workshop, get on these word right. on Wednesdays, get into uh, prayer hours that we're doing. C come to an event. Once we have events, you know, come, yes. come to the rallies that are happening next year yes. and see what God will do. If you That's just right. say, okay, God, what do you want? What do you want from me? And, and, and you do have what it takes. You have what it takes. But a, a lot of a lot of this generation is is walking around asleep and um, yeah. living for themselves. And I think a lot in in Gen Z too. You know, we we have a big old youth movement happening out here in Corbett, and um, you know we see we see teenagers throughout the week, and and that's that's the same journey they're coming to. Also, mm -hmm. is the end of themselves. And imagine coming to that at 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. And so also if you have, if you're on here and you know a millennial or you know a teenager, yeah, <laughs> get them plugged into this movement. I feel like I'm talking to maybe 10 people right now because like Jenny said, we're just not here. We're not here. We're not connected, but you guys are. Yeah. And so if you know, um, if you know someone in these generations, it's time for you to reach out yeah. because my, my mentors are all in their forties, in their fifties, in their sixties. And, and they're the ones who reached out and said, Rachel, there's more for you and yeah. pulled me out of yep. a life for myself. And so this is just a call to you also to go find those women, those younger women of this younger generation in, who's in your life. And um, call something better out of them. Call them more out of them. Call them to be a part of what God is doing um, and just to see what he will do. Yeah, I love so. that so much. Well, I'm getting this visual, you know, Pastor Callie, she was one of the people who, the uh, you know, next generation from me, reaching in and calling out, mm -hmm. calling out um, some plans and purposes that God had for me that I could not even begin to see. She pulled that out. Well, what is my stewardship with that is to mm -hmm. go to the next generation. Um, you know, I, I just want to point this out. What I love about the millennials so much, there's so much to love about them. But what I love is that they are not moved by religion. They are moved by compassion and transparency and authenticity. And I want to talk to my generation. I'm 46, so 35 and up maybe. Um, we cannot um, reach in to the to the millennials or the Gen Z. Gen Z, they're they are so transparent. I've heard somebody say this. They want to smell your breath. They want <laughs> the they want the real story. Mm -hmm. They don't want the one that's all prettied up. They don't want the one that's like Jesus is good. Well, why is he good for you? You know. And so in our in our culture, we found out really quick that um, there was a a, a strong 
pull to know Jesus for who he was Mm -hmm. when we told our real story. And we had to go first. We had to be the ones to say, guess what I was doing? Guess what shame I had to walk through? Guess what garbage I went through yesterday? And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling on, I'm pulling on Jesus today out of desperation. And I think, um, you know, I think that there's this thing that says, well, we just need to, you know, just kind of hold it together, put mm-hmm. the pretty bow on it and then call that. But they're going to, they want to know why, why are you serving God? Why did you lay your life down? Yeah. And when we come and say, well, because I was, this is what I was up to. This, this is the, the crap that mm-hmm. I was walking in when Jesus and they're like, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Yep. Now I feel like I can come instead of being called to perfection. I'm being called to love mm-hmm. rather than being called to perfection and called to religion. So our part to play is being transparent. Yep. You know, if my kids, I, I try to, it's like, I'm not going to lie to them. If I'm having um, a bad moment or something happened, it's like, yep, mom's, Right. I'm going to go apologize to your dad because what I said right there was pure garbage right there. That was, that was garbage. I'm going to go apologize rather than making up excuses or hiding everything. And, and secrets hurt families, by the way, secrets separate. And so we have to be willing to be transparent and be okay with that because you know what? It's the cross, right? We're bragging on the cross. We're bragging on what Jesus did and how he lived perfectly for us, not how we can live perfect. And so, um, and and anyway, so I just, I feel that even the youth that Mm -hmm. is getting so fired up here at Crestview, I mean, they are, it's like, we know every single Monday that we have to be transparent. And the second we try to come with performance or something perfect, it's like, you know, they're just (laughs) checked out. And so, um, anyway, I'm, I'm really excited about that, but we are, we are calling, Mm -hmm. um, the teens and all the way through the twenties, we need you. We need you. God needs you. And just like we need the older generation and the middle, we need every generation is needed in this movement. And God is going to, God's going to use you for a message of um, like a surgical message. That's mm-hmm. the prophetic word I'm hearing right now is that God's going to give you the ability to um, go in and do something surgically inside people out there who are not on here. They're not the ones on here. They're the ones out there who do not know that God can heal the deepest wound, can heal the deepest right. shame, can heal the deep, deep stuff. And I'm seeing right now um, prophetically, and I'm, I'm. this is for um, the later teens and, and 20s and early 30s. I'm seeing like not the masks we have to wear, but like the, like in the in the surgical room and you have the scrubs on and you have mm-hmm. the gloves on and I see you with precision going and and it's like, wait, that didn't hurt that bad. You know, I had to go in there and do this, but there's some, there's a, there's a compassion. Like you were made for, you are made for compassion yeah. and, and you are moved with compassion. Sometimes our compassion, we are moved like the enemy knows that. And he tries to use our compassion to give us, get us off track and start working for the enemy rather than working for um, the kingdom of light. But mm-hmm. I believe that God is going to refine that in you in this hour, he's refining your mercy gift and he's refining your compassion. Because when you, when you walk in a gift of mercy, this is for everybody who, who operates in a gift of mercy. Um, it can't be the driver. It can't be in the front. It can't be the one driving your life. It it just can't, it can be in the car. It it needs to have a voice for sure, but discernment and wisdom needs to drive the car. Okay. Because sometimes a mercy is so merciful that it's like, wait, let's help them. We have to help them. We have to help them. We couldn't pass them by, you know? And so the enemy will start putting, um, like I, what I'm seeing is like a duck decoy, mm-hmm. like the fake little plastic ducks yep. and then the duck call. And it's not a real situation right. that requires your mercy, but it's a, it's a, it's a ploy to get you off of, off of your mission. And so we need the gift of mercy. We need compassion. And then the older generation, we need your wisdom. We need your mm-hmm. discipline and, and think about when we all come together and yep. it's not like a me thing, but it's a we thing. You know, it's, I just see the M, the me yeah. needs to turn upside down to a we it's we. And so you bring your gift. Yeah. I bring my gift. You guys all bring your gift. And what happens is we're moving and we're, we're being mobilized as a unit. And that's where the enemy can't, um, he can't touch us. He can't touch us when we're in a, when we're in a, we movement, not a me movement. Mm-hmm. So um, I just bless you with that word and bless you with what Rachel prophesied there as well. Um, let me go ahead and look at the screen here. You're a little far away from my eyeballs. <laughs> Speaking of 46, I, <laughs> my glasses are somewhere. I don't know where they went. 
it's unfortunate. They have walked off once again. Um, Lori. Oh man, I don't know how to say your last Borgmeyer. name. Borgmeyer. Okay. Oh yeah, that's Borgmeyer. Okay. Lori Borgmeyer. <laughs> I, um, I just want to bless you, Lori. Um, I feel like the Lord, I'm just, I'm just hearing the Lord say that you have a, that God's going to give you an ability to gather and this, and, and what I'm seeing is you're gathering in units of five people at a time. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's prayer square parties. I don't, I don't know, but you have a small group gathering anointing where people in a small group and you're leading like, and I, I guess maybe it's the number five because there's, there's grace on it. There's grace on your ability to get, grab groups and then this pot of people and then this pot of people. And some people have an anointing to speak to 25,000. Not that you don't have that, by the way. But there are some people with the anointing to speak to 25,000 that don't have the grace to speak to five. Mm -hmm. They don't even know what to do with five, you know. So I just I feel that God is, is has called you to literally reach out to small pods of people. You're one of those people that could have like I have a, you know, a Tuesday morning group that I get with. And then Thursday night, I have another group. I just sense that God is, is pulling you into little small groups. And there's, there's something about your presence and your voice and even your ability to, um, what I'm seeing is like pain and shame kind of sloughing off people as you are with them. And you probably don't even know how you're doing it. And that's okay. You don't have to know, but I just sense that God is giving you, um, a stronger, ability and um just the equipping to gather in jesus name so we just bless you yes. with that in jesus name i'll do one more and then you can <clears throat> you can grab somebody um okay brandy turner i'm over on youtube maybe you can grab somebody up on facebook I've got somebody already okay cool um brandy is that turner to is that say that? Sorry, it's so dainty. Um Brandy Turner. Okay, I'm glad it's Turner because I heard turn around. God has a turnaround for you. Um, not that you're going to turn around, but God literally is going to steer you and there's a turnaround anointing coming. Whatever you've been through in the last three to six months, I'm, I'm seeing that six months ago, it was like, yikes. And then this three months has kind of let up a little bit, but you've been in this like um, kind of swimming upstream feeling like, like I'm swimming through mud and it's a lot of work or like running in sand, right? Like so difficult, but that's okay. God says that you, you that, that this season of, of travailing through resistance is going to produce for you. And now what I'm seeing is as you're running, like that sand is becoming harder and firmer. And then it's very shortly here over the next two weeks, it's going to hit like pavement mm -hmm. and you're going to have like a full on stride, but it's like a turn, it's a turnaround and there's not going to be this sludgy type of effort that's going to go in. God is absolutely using what the enemy wanted to use against you. He's absolutely using it for your breakthrough, for your breakthrough. And you know what happened during that time? Your muscles got stronger because that's the only way to get stronger muscles is to have resistance. I, you know, if I do bicep curls with nothing in my hands, you know, that's a little bit, but the second you give me like 10 pound or 15 pound dumbbells, now what's happening here, that resistance is causing the burn. The fibers are actually ripping. That's how you make new muscles. It rips and tears. And then it tells the brain, there's something that signals the brain, uh-oh, man down, man down, man down, man down, man down. And the brain actually says produce more muscle. And so more muscle is produced as long as we have enough calories to sustain a producing more muscle fibers. So muscle fibers are produced when they're when the muscle fibers we have are broken down like man down that's what i keep hearing and that's what the enemy's been saying man down man down man down man down branding down 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 and um he's tried to mark you or brand you brand you brandy brand with a with like a you're 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 down man down and and god's like bring the reinforcements bring the new muscle fibers bring the reinforcements mm -hmm. and there's you are going to have such a crazy amount of resilience for resistance, it is going to shock you. You know, when somebody can just pick up a box and like, yeah, where do you want it? And you tried to pick it up a second ago and you're like, wow, they're strong <laughs> because they look like they're expending barely any effort and I could barely pick it up. That is what you're going to be to people. They're going to be like, whoa, how did that happen? And, and this might be the reason you're getting this word today is because you need to remember 
you need to remember God allowed a brief suffering in order to pick me up. There is um, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5 through 9. I want you to read that, Brandy. I want you to read 1 Peter chapter 5, 5 verses 5 through 9. It talks about we bow low in his presence, the things that happens. And after brief suffering, we will arise with more power than we had before because of the power that he's putting in us in our brief suffering. It's a powerful passage of scripture. So I bless you with that. And you are just like, I just see like, um, is it, was it she oh, yeah, No. Is that right? No. Who's the superhero Tiffany always talks about? she Is it she Yeah. Okay. I don't even know about she I think I'd missed her somewhere. I think I was out of the superhero <laughs> phase there in my age category. But um, Shira, I, I just see that, that you are going to have these supernatural muscles that, that are not just going to be for the, for the sake of being impressive. Mm -hmm. They're going to be the sake for lifting heavy things in the kingdom. You're going to begin to do things in the kingdom that you couldn't even do a year ago because you are able and equipped with that ability and that power. So you can just put a big old smile on your face and say that training was worth it. That resistance training was completely worth it in Jesus name. Yeah. 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 Um... So good. I've got uh, Trish Guthrie. Every Great. single time your name pops up, Trish, I see a bulldozer in the spirit, just like plowing things down. Mm. And I, I, I know you're in the tech world. I know if we've talked about this before um, that your your job in tech makes a difference, but that's not even where I saw it. it. Has nothing to do with tech. It has everything to do with your influence with people. Amen. And that God is going to increase your influence with people. And in the spirit, you're going to bulldoze the enemy and what yes. he's trying to do in people's lives and in in um, in your region. Even you are a pillar in your region, Trish, amen. a pillar. And we need you. Yes, amen. <laughs> we need you, Trish. And so um, just that I just I just keep seeing it. Just you're going to run the enemy over where you are. And and I, I saw the same thing like you gathering people to gather, 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 gather. Um, and that your your influence and everything that you have um, learned and been through and and, and God's going to start to use that um, with uh, these groups of women that he's going to send to you to mentor. And um, gosh, yes. just to I mean, we talk about that our assignment is our assignment. Our assignment doesn't mm -hmm. change. Our, purpose. our purpose doesn't change. That's yes. right. Our assignment can change, but our yes. purpose is to destroy the works of the devil That's and right. see the kingdom of God on earth. And Trish, that is what you are going to do. Yes. Amen. So if you have been thinking, whether you have purpose or not, you do. And God is ready to just, I, I feel like there's a, an expansion in your influence coming um, really Amen. soon. Um, and then I had, I saw Rachel Ding. And when I read your name, I heard Ding, the door is open. Wow. Ding, the door is open. And so um, I don't know what that means for you, but I feel like God's opening a brand new season. Um, there's there's an open door, an opportunity that's coming for you. And um, this is your confirmation. Walk through it. Walk through the door. The door is open. God is setting that whole thing up for you. Um, and it's going to be good. So Amy, amazing. I just heard, um, and this is for across the board. This is a corporate word. I heard um, ding dong, the witch is dead. And, um, you guys, um, the spirit of Jezebel, um, she's super persistent. Okay. But we have everlasting endurance. We have the endurance of endurance of God. We, we can outlast, but it's not just about outlasting, um, the turmoil, a Jezebel spirit of, is one of manipulation control, um, to divide and slander and gossip and really divide the body. Mm -hmm. Because when you divide an army that is in uni unison and marching forward and start picking people off and dividing, that's one of the, that's one of the signs that, you know, that a, a Jezebel spirit is in operation when people start going, Oh, I can't trust them anymore. Oh, and I have to come out of here. And Oh, Oh, and I'm super concerned about them. And it's this like, like, um, kind of evaluating and judging certain people who are in the same army as you. And, and, and I'm, whether you've agreed with that spirit or that mm -hmm. spirit has tried to come and manipulate you through somebody else, it kind of doesn't matter because the spirit is not a person. And what I'm hearing, ding dong, the witch is dead. Yeah. And, and you're going to, um, I know that I, I got somebody who had a dream this morning. They texted me um, about a, a woman that they had to like, that was attacking them and they had to attack back. And um, I just, I, I want you to know in this hour, um, Actually, I'm giving you permission, every single one of you, to pick up, pick up the winning punch. 
pick up the winning punch and say, enough is enough. You're not going to separate me and my daughter. There's some of you that have been fighting with your teenage daughter or even your grown daughter. And there's been this tension and this contention and this thing. And you just, you know, no, you, you go in going, okay, it's going to be a better time. And then all of a sudden you're arguing again, or you're, or there's something between you. You're going to go in with the final punch, mm -hmm. the final blow, and you're going to not make it about that person anymore. Yep. That is what the enemy wants. He wants you to make it about that person. And it's not about that person. That's a distraction. It is something in between. It is something that's trying to get in between you and them, in between you and your leader, in between you and your mentor, in between you and the people you are mentoring. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what that thing does is it divides and picks off. And when we are picked off and discouraged, guess what we do? We quit. That's the whole goal of that spirit. And so ding dong, the witch is dead. And how they're going to be dead is by you saying no more. Yeah. Not thinking no more by you saying no more, no more. Get out of my house, get out of my home, get out of my mind, get out of my spirit, get out of my soul, get out of everywhere, get out, mm -hmm. get out of my relationships, get out of my finances, get out of my emotions, get out of my narrative. No, I'm not going to recycle the story of how I was done wrong. I'm not going to recycle that story any longer. That thing is done. It's at the cross. And Father, I repent for any part that I have played <clears throat> in the narrative, in the story, in the rebellion, yeah. in the slander, in yeah. the gossip. Just repent for playing a part or for picking it up or agreeing or getting offended or whatever. And a lot of times we want to make it all about what the other person has done. And right now that's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's about a demonic strategy that you have the authority to tear down through humility, repentance, mm -hmm. and telling that thing to get the heck out in Jesus name and not tolerate it. You will not tolerate disunity right. in your home. You will not tolerate yep. irritability ruling in your marriage. You will not tolerate your children always snapping and fighting and striving and nitpicking. No, no, don't call it normal any longer. That's enough. That's enough. And you're going to have to, how I'm saying it right now is how you're going to have yeah. to say it in your own atmosphere. I can't come in your home right now and do it for you because you know what? You're the one that holds the authority. You're the one that holds the key to open up that thing, open the door and say, get out, get out of my relationships, mm -hmm. get out of my workplace, get out of my mind, get out of my narrative, get out of my emotions, get out of my physical body. Leave me alone. You're not going to torment my physical body anymore. Leave. And I repent for every part I played in this. Every place I agree with the spirit, I disagree with it right now. I repent. And Father God, you are the only, you are the only spirit that I worship. I worship none other than you. And you open that thing, get out, and then you close the door and you lock it down. Yeah. You lock it down with your authority. Good. Yep. That's what we're going to do right now. We're not, we're not going to tolerate that thing anymore. You don't have to tolerate arguing. You don't have to tolerate, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, bickering. That's the word I keep hearing. The bickering that's been happen happening in the home and between the family and the kids and the parents. Enough. Enough. You tell that spirit of bickering to leave right now in Jesus' name. You know, a lot of people go, well, I'm, I'm kind of afraid of the devil. I'm kind of afraid of demons. And um, okay, well, that's why they have more power than you mm -hmm. understand that they need to have right now. They, they only have power if we back up and go, oh, yep. oh, what are you doing? Oh my gosh, what are you? Well, let me pretend you're not here. Yep. Let me pretend you're not here. <clears throat> right. That's that's just dumb. Okay. okay the lyrics to this song. This okay. is what I was looking up. I've been hearing Ding Dong Witch is dead for probably a month. Seriously? Yeah. And so a few weeks ago I looked up the lyrics and I actually watched Wizard of Oz on the plane last week. <laughs> um, wow. but it says um Ding Dong the Witch is dead, Witch Old Witch, the Wicked Witch. Ding dong, the wicked witch is dead. But then this part is what you're just talking about. Wake up, you sleepy head. What? Rub your eyes, get out of bed. Wake up, the wicked witch is dead. Wow. Wow. <laughs> but that's, we can't just back up and, 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 you know, stay asleep. Mm -hmm. This the spirit has lulled a lot of yep. people to sleep. Yep, spiritual sleep. It's just, you know, and now we're, and now we don't want to deal with that. I actually put this necklace on uh, this morning coming over here. It says bold. So we're going to have to be, and I was like, God, what, you know, what, 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 why did I put this on? I asked him when I put it on 
And wow. um, this is what it's for just to be, we have, we're going to have to be bold and waking up and taking this spirit by the throat and telling her where to go. <laughs> well, what was it in the, in the wizard of Oz? It was the scarecrow, the lion and the mm -hmm. tin man. And it was courage. Yep. Um, heart and yep. brain. Mm -hmm. So it's like love, courage, and wisdom, mm -hmm. love, courage, and wisdom. And you know what? We're not just going to kick out a spirit and then go, okay, now we're in an empty house. We're right. going to, and we're, we're going right now. We're going to tap into love, courage, and wisdom. And so we just prophesy that right now yep. that love courage and wisdom will yes. have a loud, overwhelming presence yeah. in your mind, in your heart, in your body, in your home, in your relationships, in your business, in your workplace, in your car, in yes. your bedroom, in your yes. bathroom, in your kitchen, in your living room, in your coming and your going. Love, courage, or yes. boldness. Love, boldness, courage, and wisdom. You know, the Bible says to cry out for wisdom. And it's like something about the square, like mm -hmm. wisdom is in the square in the town square, which, yep. you know, here we are in our prayer square. We <laughs> so we cry out for wisdom, cry out for wisdom. You know, it takes humility to ask God for wisdom instead of thinking, well, I can handle this myself mm -hmm. or I'll just get over this or I'll just try not to be irritable. That's not going to work. It doesn't work. Ask yourself, has that worked? And so we have to bow low. We bow low in the presence of God. And we say, God, we need your help today. We need your wisdom. We need your courage. And we, we need your love. And we command every wicked thing, every yep. strategy of the enemy, every plan, every blueprint, every everything that the enemy has come against my life today, we send it fleeing seven ways. That's yep. what the Bible says. He'll come in one way and God will, will send them out seven ways. And so that's what we do right now in Jesus yes. name. And we thank you, Father. We thank you, Jesus, for doing that. We believe, God, that you're doing that right now for every person that has a mustard seed yes. of faith, that you're bringing courage, love, and wisdom into their life right now in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Well, we love you so much. Um, this is really, really fun. We hope that you'll join us next Wednesday for sure. Hey, one more thing before we let you guys go. Some of you have been asking about forging diamonds. I know that we've been doing this for several different months and you've asked, you've, you've sent personal messages and that kind of thing. We decided to do a free day of forging diamonds. So forging diamonds, if you don't know what it is, it is separate from our ministry, but it, but it is ministry because it's a spiritual health coaching um, program that we have. Spiritual health coaching is helping people through a consistent, we actually have a 12 week immersion program and we assign everyone a coach and they get spiritual, um, actually body, soul and spirit coaching for 12 weeks. We go through a digestive reset, a 14 day reset on the digestion. There's um, intensive coaching so that people can come out the other side, um, really kicking some tail <laughs> and getting projects done and books written and different things, um, setting women up in their authority. It's really, really awesome. I know that you've seen some of the testimonies and hopefully you've heard some of them. They're crazy amazing. But we decided to do one free day of forging diamonds of spiritual health coaching tomorrow. OK, and this is just for people that go, yeah, just give me a day of this. I want to I want to experience this. So tomorrow I will be sending a meditation in the morning to your phone. If you sign up for this, this is what we do every single day for the 12 weeks is I have a, a meditation and it's um, on the word of God and it's to press in and really help knit together a, a new thought, a new paradigm from the word of God. And it's roughly 12 minutes long and we send it as an audio to your phone. And then we have at two o'clock uh, Pacific standard time tomorrow, I will be doing a, a video. I will be doing a live gathering and I'll be going through a typical week with forging diamonds. Cause every single week we do a, a large group as well as our personal training. And I will be taking you through a workshop, something body, soul, spirit, something for you to tangibly bring a tool into your life that will change your life. And that's one hour at two o'clock tomorrow. Okay. So here's how you're going to do it. Okay. And I will record that for those people that can't be on live. All right. Here's how you're going to do this. You are simply going to sign up very easy through the same text number that we've been using for our Her Voice um, or her voice text. Okay. So I'm going to give you the phone number. It's five zero three. And hopefully somebody can type this for me. Somebody put this <laughs> in the comments. Um, five zero three, four, six, eight, four, four, six, eight, five zero three, four, six, eight, four, four, six, eight. And in the message, if you want to be part of her voice, what we're doing with the million esters, put in her voice. Okay. Her voice. 
If you want that free day of forging diamonds and you just want to be connected to more um, coaching tips and that kind of thing, then put in the word coach and you'll have to send those separately. You can do her voice in one text and then send coach in another. That'll automatically drop you into my two different text mm -hmm. groups for two different conversations. So if you want to be part of that free day of forging diamonds, you got to get in there today so that you are in the text system for tomorrow morning, early tomorrow morning. I will drop in a, um, a meditation for you. And then I will send you a link to come into a meeting at two o'clock. And I'll also send you the replay for the recording. All right. So hopefully you guys can do that. Love you so much. Thank you for being here. Do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Jenny Donnelly official. Also subscribe to Pastor Callie. Look up Callie Ship Gray, her YouTube channel. That will allow you to stay connected to the movement. And we'll see you guys very shortly. Prayer tomorrow with Pastor Callie all through the rest of the week. And we'll be back on Sunday night, 5 p.m. Pacific, fire hour. Bring Don't the house down. That. Do not miss Don't it. Miss Invite people. Okay, we bring the hardest things to the table. We, if you have somebody that you need a miracle for that is addicted to drugs, maybe you are suffering with something, maybe something else is going on, but we're going to go to bat for you on Sunday night, 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's it's pretty fiery. <laughs> okay. We'll see you guys there. God bless you. Love you so much. Thanks for being here.